this lawsuit. Like, to be honest, like I have not, here's the thing why I know they're never going to sue me. They're never going to sue me because if they sue me, they have to basically open discovery. And then I can say, well, did you not do this? Prove to me that you didn't do this. You know, show me the evidence that this didn't happen. They're never going to sue me because the discovery for me would be terrible for them. And then I could, you know, I could also file a lawsuit against them for harassing me to take it down. You know what I mean? Or for fi filing a false lawsuit against me. I could easily do a, you know, a, a complaint against them. So there's no way they're going to file a lawsuit about me. They're not going to file a lawsuit about me. She'll threaten me, but she's not going to sue me. She's got way bigger fish to fry right now. This is way bigger. Okay. If they were going to sue me, it would have already happened. <laughs> it literally would have already happened. It would have happened. It would have happened 18 months ago when they wanted me to take this down, when they sent me four cease and desists. They never sued me because they're not going to sue me based on public records. And I have a right to have my opinion and I have a right to talk about public records if it involves a public figure. Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. Hope everybody is doing fantastic wherever you are in this world. Hope everybody has had a fantastic Monday. And you guys, we are dealing with a storm with so much rain. It's sad for me to say I'm so over this rain, but I am so over this rain. But anyway, you guys... Um, I do apologize in advance. If this is going to be a long video, I suspect it is going to be a long video. I truly do apologize. But if it does get a bit too long, I'll definitely cut it down into two parts. So after I'm done editing it, I'll, I'll see where I stand. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload. Also, please do not take what I say as fact. Feel free to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. And I am going to list quite a few videos down below. So please don't forget to check the description box. I started getting so many messages. I think it was on Sunday about this whole live that was done with on Kay Baxter's channel, where it was like everybody and their mother was there. And I did get to watch it and you know what it is what it is but the most important thing i'm going to say about that pay attention to katie joy she'll go on somebody else's channel and have such a foul mouth she knows the rules and regulations of youtube she knows she has a channel herself there was no need to go into such depth and discuss and basically say what these death threats were about especially if that was not her channel. But it just goes to show the level of respect that Katie Joy has. Absolutely zero, in my opinion. The other issue that I have is that woman by the name of Pickles was actually, uh, lack of a better word, cross-examining Nat, okay? So it is hard to see people that basically are so far up Katie's backside that you can barely see their bootstraps because at the end of the day, what she is going through absolutely horrific nobody should go through that but it does not i emphasize does not exempt her from the bullshit that she has put other people through and that hasn't even had the audacity to confess to to fess up to or to even apologize to these people i was watching and there is by no means um targeting somebody or taking somebody's part that's that's not what it's about but she was on and she only herself targeted leslie bass it's like let me just leave it at that what's wrong is wrong absolutely wrong she knows what she did to leslie bass and she still has the audacity to lie about it and that is the sad thing about it also this woman pickles she we all heard her asking Katie to unblock her from her Twitter and all that BS. So, allegedly, Katie put a screenshot on her Twitter calling this woman Pickles out. Saying how she was kissing her backside and, and she can go and she can have a conversation with this guy, Steve. Now, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, it's just me, who cares? But anyway, she has the right... If you're accusing the Steve person of doing all these vile things, like how you're cross-examined or was questioning Nat, why can't he be questioned? Why can't people get his side of the story? So because Pickles was talking to him over social media, Katie got upset. Why the fuck is she getting upset? you got to have two sides of the story. You can't only have Katie's side of the story because, in my opinion, she lies. 
So that's just my opinion about that whole fact. Now let's move on to her Twitter. And this is the comment that Katie has pinned on her Twitter. Until you have walked in my shoes, you won't get it. This man has harassed, threatened, defamed, and hurt my businesses out of revenge for two years. If any one of you for believing his bullshit, a judge believed me and not even a, if an NDA stopped him. Do I recall correctly? She accused somebody by the name of Tina for stalking her for two years. Then there was um, two other people that she accused. Now it's Steve that has been stalking her for two years. And please, I beg anybody out there, why the fuck has this woman not done anything about this? She claims, she says who these stalkers are, but she has done jack shit about it. This is getting so old. I can't find anything within me, and I, I know the type of person I am, to find the empathy for her anymore. I, I can't. I truly cannot. Because this is getting truly old. And then she posts this. I'm going to be very clear. What is happening to me is not a game, and it's not drama. Stay out of my DMs if you're trying, or she I say, trying to bait me or get me to respond. I'm not entertaining anyone that continues to act like my trauma is their entertainment, period. So if your trauma is nobody's entertainment, so why the fuck, Katie, are you playing mind games? And this is what I'm talking about. On her Twitter, she posts, does anyone know of a dog groomer in Bridgeville, Pennsylvania or near there? I have a friend looking for someone reliable. I figured I'd ask around. Now, you know where this is coming from. If you had listened to Kay Baxter's live when KJ was on there, what is happening in Pennsylvania? Apparently, they have changed FBI officers. So the FBI case was first in Washington, state of Washington. Then it moved to Los Angeles. Now it's moved to Pennsylvania. So she put this out there to bait people. Like the same way she baited um, the other woman, JF. I'm not going to call her name because that's not my place. She baited her because this she put on her Twitter about somebody living in Kansas. And this woman fell for the bait. So you get what I'm saying? KJ thinks this is a game. If she's cheating it like a game, how can you expect other people to take you seriously? It just, it's, it's just mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. You guys, all I know nobody's listening to me. I can only be accountable for myself. But let this just play out. Stop being the Inspector Gadgets or... Stop being the Nancy Drews. Stop putting yourselves in harm's way. I know you'll want to get to the truth. But innocent people and good people are getting hurt in this process. Katie Joy herself is putting so many people in harm's way. Just step back. Keep focused on what you started doing in the first place. Katie gives us so much content, you guys. So much content. She herself has given up so much. Her attorney told her, to, how many months ago, to keep this offline and handle things behind the scene. But she can't seem to keep her mouth shut. KJ was on this uh, live with Kay Baxter. She was so horrible to Nat in the beginning. But towards the end, you swear blind, there were BFFs. She was all about Nat. So, she wants to talk about mental gymnastics. She herself is going through mental gymnastics, honestly speaking. Because in my opinion, and this is just me, and she should have taken a page out of Tati's book. You're going through all this. What your family is going through, you should get completely off social media. Handle what's important. Tati was off social media for a good year not even making videos 
okay? Tati did everything she needed to do to get justice for herself. Clearly, this woman is enjoying this because she is doing shit. Especially if she was getting such vile messages or death threats about her son. And like I said prior, I would be fucking knocking doors down. I would camp out any police station, any FBI head office, whatever, to get those people. Because that is something you don't take lightly. Now, how can we forget the whole lawsuit that was first dismissed? Then they were in talks, they settled, and KJ claimed that she won. The lawsuit was settled because I would have won. Not any other reason. I would have won. And I still can't figure out how she feels she's won. Because Tati got everything she needed that she has actually filed a lawsuit against that same person, Clark Swanson, that was KJ's source. She filed a lawsuit against him. So now KJ has turned from defendant to witness. Wow. And she's so proud of it. She feels, or oh, it's her, you know, do you boo. Her and Tati are like on good terms. For what she has done to this family. Unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. If Tati and them have forgiven her, all well and good. But it doesn't take away from the type of person that she is. It took her going through a lawsuit. It costed her thousands of dollars to stop what she was doing. So let's get into that lawsuit, you guys. So you guys, this lawsuit was filed, I think, two Fridays ago. So now we do know that um, KJ did settle. And she, and I always say, couldn't stand the heat got out of the kitchen, and sold the whole house. So, she ended up giving Tati everything they needed in response to the source, a.k.a. Clark Swanson. So, as we go through these papers, I just took what was important. If you want to find out the whole reading, and you can go over to Emily D. Baker. She breaks it down fantastic. And it's really just like, whoa. So let's get into this. Swanson individually and on behalf of Halo Beauty Inc. and Swanson Global Enterprises Inc. on its own, Beauty Partners LLC versus Tati Cosmetics Inc. And the summary of the lawsuit, this is a lawsuit caused by the defendant's greed. And it says, Tati Westbrook, one of the first and most successful YouTube beauty influencers in history, together with her new husband, James Westbrook, planned a nutritional supplements business split 50-50, Mr. Westbrook's old colleague and friend, Clark Swanson. Swanson's attempts to destroy the company. If Swanson truly believed he was entitled to the stake in all of the nutraceutical and non-nutraceutical consumer products related to Tati, his own personal interest would be to ensure that the reputation was preserved so that those products would remain successful. At the very least, as one third owner of the company, who knows the company's success is directly tied to Tati's reputation. One would think Swanson would carefully guard the company's success out of his own self-interest. Aware that this claims against the Westbrooks were without legal or factual merit, Swanson was not content or merely have his lawsuit resolved. Instead, he launched a campaign to destroy Tati and the company. Statements about the Westbrooks and the company on her blog at patheos.com, throughout her social media and on her YouTube channel called Without a Crystal Ball. The company has informed that she and believe that Paulson made several disparaging statements and assertions that were critical of the company and the Westbrooks, including and not limited to the company's products of snake oil, we all remember that, and junk vitamins. There's zero testing that show the company's products do anything. The company's 
products are harmful to human health. The company manipulated its consumer into buying the company's products. The company is financially worthless. The company's products seemingly violates federal law by not having approval from the FDA. Paulson also made numerous statements about the Westbrooks, their character, their professional credentials and trustworthiness. Paulson also made numerous statements about Swanson, his professional credentials and trustworthiness. Now, you guys remember how when KJ was digging into and reading off of uh, Swanson's LinkedIn, I'm going to try to find the clip and I'm going to insert it here. Let's move on. As a result of these statements and others, the company, with Swanson's consent and the Westbrooks, sent four cease and desist letters over the next few months and began drafting a complaint to file a lawsuit against Swanson in the United States District Court, Western District of Washington. Even though the lawsuits against Paulson sought to protect the company's brand and Tati's reputation as the face of the brand, Swanson opposed the lawsuit. In fact, he remarkably claimed that the lawsuit was of brazen self-dealing. Swanson even deprived the company of the ability to pay the attorney's fees associated with litigation, forcing the burden upon the Westbrooks to protect the company's reputation and the reputation of its spokesperson. So, this is where things seem to fit together. Just my opinion, just my observation, just me saying what possibly could have happened. So Swanson knew that he was dealing with KJ. Well, she made the statement in one of her videos saying after four cease and desist, she's still there. She even made a snarky comment the one time in a very old video of hers where she says, oh, well, Tati, I'm still here. Now, that is a person that has the fucking balls. She truly thought she did. But unfortunately, unfortunately for her, after being so arrogant, after being so I'm um, all that, shit hit the fan. Swanson knew that he was feeding her all this information. In my opinion, Swanson must have told her, you know what, don't worry about it. The most they're going to do is send you the cease and desist. I'm not going to approve them suing you. I'm not going to approve of them using the company money to pay for their legal fees. Not knowing the strong people that Tati and James Westbrook are that they persevered. Let's move on. The lawsuit against Paulson was ultimately dismissed without prejudice for want of personal jurisdiction in the state of Washington. As a result of the federal district court never reached the merits of the actions. The Westbrooks ultimately came to believe that based on the nature of the information that Paulson was disseminating, that Swanson was surreptitiously giving Paulson information and making disparaging statements about Tati and the company to Paulson that would be harmful to the company. In an attempt to destroy Tati's reputation and wrestle away ownership in the company he had co-founded. The company is informed and believes that beginning in or around April or May 2020, Swanson began communicating extensively with Paulson regarding the company, the Halo Beauty products and the Westbrooks. The company is informed and believes that these communications occurred via telephone calls, emails and private messages on social media platforms. The company is informed and believes that Swanson knew what he was doing when he contacted Paulson prior to his communication with Paulson. She had already published over 50 videos concerning the Westbrooks that were not favorable to the company or its spokesperson, Tati Westbrook. Swanson was aware of Paulson's prior videos. Swanson was aware that the videos were damaging to the company's reputation. In fact, Swanson had previously worked with the Westbrooks to try to get Paulson remove the videos and statements from social media by approving the cease and desist letters. So all day long, I was doing research, you guys. Research, I tell you. Remember how I told you I was going to try to do something where I exposed Tati Westbrook? And I was like, looking, and I've been doing this for two days straight now. Two days, thinking I would find something. When I started digging into her background, and I have looked all over the place, you guys. Everywhere, everywhere. Because part of what, part of what I do is I... 
Super chat? What do you mean super chat? You can give me a super chat if you wanted to give me a super chat. But part of what I do is I like to look into people that sell snake oil to see if they have stuff in their background that would make them less than honorable, um, something that might indicate that they are, you know, there's something legal going on, they have a criminal background, they have um, a criminal history, they owe money, they have like a reputation for doing all these things. And then when you go to her, her mother's page or her sister's pages who are all still there, they're all like, she's, she doesn't exist as a part of their family anymore. It's crazy. I started playing around even more and digging through more and more information, going through marriage records and through, um, birth certificates. I couldn't even find her birth certificate, which is weird. There's like zero records of her father, like zero records. So then I start going on and I'm like, getting into this conspiracy thinking like her dad is dead or like why doesn't her dad have a job or her dad's in the mafia. I'm... So then I start digging through addresses and phone numbers and email addresses and doing all these searches and um, going through businesses and looking at all this different stuff to try to like connect some dots. So I feel like there's a story here with her dad and I'm not sure what it is. We're going to have to keep looking there. And then there's something with her mom too and I'm just going to have to keep digging. I'll keep digging and keep looking on the Tati stuff. Leaves wholeheartedly in these vitamins, except they're not regulated. And I just want you to keep that in mind. She's been accused of selling snake oil. And honestly, after everything that I've done, I can say without a doubt, her product is snake oil. Her product is overpriced and her product is being used to like, she's manipulating her followers into buying these products and promising results that have zero testing to show that they do anything. In fact, only one ingredient, one single ingredient in her entire vitamin line has ever gone through any clinical trials. And the clinical trials have been done on one individual along with mice, and that's it. So now we're talking about he got $340,000 from William that he didn't pay back. And then he got $938,000 in mortgages that he didn't pay back. Interesting. They sold the property, so it's hopefully that some of this would have been paid back through that way, but James liquidated a lot of money, let's just say. Tati brags that he's a self-made man, I'll bet. When you're stealing money from your family, it's really self-made. All right, oddly, with all this fraud going on, he's never arrested. And I assure you, it's coming. Um, there is a huge issue happening right now with them, and their business is, are on the verge of imploding. So, and it all relates back to that history that they have and just not necessarily following the rules. So that will be coming in the future, <laughs> but I can't tell you yet, but once it is public, I will promise I will share it. It's super tacky and super disgusting that she would upload a video and capitalize on these 5 million subscribers that she earned off of the bullying and harassment of a 20 year old kid and the spreading of vicious rumors. It's so disgusting. So Tati is literally showing that all of this for her is about the cash. And, um, I've been doing a little bit of digging on forums and into some history about her. So I'm hopefully going to do a little bit more of an ex expose on her so you guys can get a better handle about like what her motives are. But she said this wasn't about the vitamins. It wasn't about money, but she tackily literally like dump, dumped a video this week. And it's, if that's not capitalizing on the 5 million subscribers you just got, I don't know what is. And I really hope at some point this woman is held accountable for what she did. I hope there's some sort of legal ramifications for her or some sort of lawsuit or something. Some sort of lawsuit or something because she should not be able to profit off of somebody else's, ruining somebody else's life. It's disgusting. So you know what? Unsubscribe, cancel Tati, whatever. Like just don't support her. She's a horrible human being. Oh my gosh. In my opinion, Swanson was playing both sides of the fence. Both sides of the fence. And you guys, this is just me. This is just my opinion. 
Swanson found a loophole, but unfortunately, he found an arsehole. Because look what happened in the end. Swanson got called out and named as the source. Katie gave him up to save her own back. Not that I'm saying it's wrong, but she did what she felt was right. Can you see what greed does? Greed is, it's a terrible thing, you guys, terrible thing. And what also struck me while I was making this video and on Kay Baxter's live, when they were questioning Nat, don't quote me on this, but I'm sure Nat said that she also spoke to Swanson. So what is she speaking to Swanson about? Let's move on. Nonetheless, the company has informed and believes that Swanson initially contacted Paulson under the false pretense that he wanted to learn more about Paulson's article published in or, or around May of 2019 concerning James, which the articles were removed from the internet in or around September 2019, due in part to the cease and desist letters the company had served on patheos.com and could only be found through the web archive. And to discuss the benefits of the Halo Beauty products, the company is informed and believes that it quickly became clear that Swanson intended to disseminate the company's non-public confidential information to Paulson and to damage the company's reputation and tardy Westbrook's ability to promote the products of the company. They sent a cease and desist to Patheos, where KJ was working, and she actually wrote this. Let me play this for you. So last year I wrote up a piece and admit, and after doing that, I received a letter from her attorneys and after which I received that letter, I cleaned up the article and I completely changed the way that it was, the article was put together and I took out any of the things that would have been claims or inaccurate or potentially false. And I learned a lot, I did, I learned a lot through that experience. But, and after I did that, they were like, yes, you, you definitely made these corrections but it's not enough. And then I subsequently received more letters from them, four in fact, and I was afraid that I was not able to share them because they said in the letter that if I published it, it would be against copyright infringement, even in part or in full, and that they would take legal grounds against me if I even spoke about it or published it. Fast forward to today, and I do have an attorney who represents me and handles all of this kind of stuff for me, and I was able to send him over all of the stuff I had received, and I said, hey, if they actually said that I can't talk about this, is that true, and can I actually show people a couple of things in which they said? And he was, and my attorney told me that under fair use, I am able to publish whatever it is that I want, as long as I'm not taking the entirety of something and I'm not using it in a way to be malicious. And I'm not here to do anything maliciously. I'm just showing you like what it was that she was mad at me or not maybe mad at me, but they were upset that I had made these statements. Um, a letter was sent to my former company that I was writing for at the time, and then I was copied on it. And one of the statements in which she did not want me to actually, she wanted me to retract was that this is what it said. During her Bi Sister video, Westbrook offered no proof for any of her claims. She said a phone call from James Charles made her want to vomit. Then she proceeded to go off about how the young model preys on straight men and causes them into trysts. And then the response from them was the above statement is utterly and maliciously disparaging, false, and merit. Miss Westbrook's statements in regards were based upon her firsthand observations of Mr. Charles. So I effectively summed up what happened on her video, which is kind of, I mean, what she said, like you cannot manipulate people, right? And she did say it made me want to vomit. Was in a 43 minute video, Westbrook accused James of using his power and influence to coerce men into having relationships with him. During the video, Westbrook offered no evidence for her claims, right? So she did, I mean, in that video, she talked about how he was using his power and influence and that it wasn't okay to do this. And they responded by saying the above statement is utterly and disparaging, false and without merit. Again, Ms. Westbrook's statement in this regard were based upon her firsthand observations of Mr. Charles. So, and then it was like, even if I said something about Charles James, um, she would like, they got upset too. Let's move on with this. The company is informed and believes that as an example, James had made Swanson aware of confidential information that Paulson had recently removed numerous negative videos about the company and Tati after another social media personality had successfully reached out to Paulson on his own and requested her to do so. Swanson then used that confidential information and told Paulson that James had convinced that social media personality to contact Paulson and tell her to remove prior videos with damaging remarks about the company. The statement was completely untrue. 
James had not directed the social media personality to reach out to Paulson, but disclosed to Swanson that the social media personality had initiated contact with Paulson out of fear that the company's anticipated lawsuit against Paulson would potentially disclose their family member as one of Paulson's sources of information. Nevertheless, Swanson told Paulson that James was involved behind the scenes of said request and used that information to sow distrust with Paulson about the information that she received from the social media personality, all in an effort to build an alliance with Paulson to do his bidding and to have Paulson repost the damaging videos. In the end, Paulson reposted the videos that she had recently deleted and continued to publish new content with devastating effect on the company. As I remember, during this time, and they say um, social media personality, and I am assuming that we're talking about, or they're talking about James Charles, because how can we forget when Katie Joy came and made two videos about the fact how James Charles reached out to her. And she was like, I'm gonna insert all the DMs here. You can pause to read them because there are so many DMs and it just totally frustrates me because the more James is trying to explain to her what she should do in the best interest for herself, never mind, you guys can just read it yourself. So she came on a YouTube channel and she made a video reading out these DMs and saying how disappointed she was. And James Charles was merely just looking out for or trying to figure out from her who her source was. And it's alleged that James Charles's mother was actually talking to Katie Joy, which she, she herself has actually admitted to. So, as you can see from these DMs, he's trying to tell her to take everything down because there is a lawsuit that has been spoken about and they wanting to move forward with it, but I'm not saying anything. He's trying to explain to her that there is a lawsuit but she feels that she's got Swanson. Now we know she had Swanson in her ear. So at the end of everything, Swanson came back with this information that he learned from James Westbrook and he twisted everything around to build an ally with her. And he told her, talking about Katie Joy, that Tati and James Westbrook was the one to actually send James to her to get rid of all this information, which was not true. So in turn, Katie Joy went right back onto her YouTube channel and she basically was so disappointed with James Charles. And this is what she had to say. James, I tried to reach out to you. I tried to clear this up. I'm not okay with this. I hope you do better. Please don't use your platform like this. Please don't intimidate other people. And you know what? Conversely, I'm going to do better myself. And if I've done this to anyone, I'm sorry. But having someone with a platform this large and as large as he is scares the crap out of me for sharing this because I know his stands are going to come after me. And I still don't like hate him. I just wish that he wouldn't have lied to me. And I wish that I wouldn't have been part of their game. They used me as a part of their game. So while he says that Jeffrey used Tati, I feel like James used me. And that's not okay behind the scenes like she has disappeared from YouTube and there's been a lot of things coming out that I can't talk about yet but you will know about soon and because of that I can't reveal like how I know that Tati and James Westbrook like effectively told James Charles to reach out to me I just know it because of how I was told and who told me so in the future, I'll be able to share that with you. I just can't right now. Um, somebody had said to me that, you know, I was outing my sources as though I was breaking a, a trust with James Charles. I want to be clear that James Charles was never my source, has never been my source. And until that day, I had no relationship with him. So I had never spoken to him. I knew nothing personally about him. He was not someone that I was given tips from. He hasn't given me any tips since. Um, we have only exchanged a few things. Like after Tati put out her video, basically where she blamed everyone, I legit reached out to him and I was just like, you need to be careful. You literally should not be 
connected to this woman. She completely used you. She's using you to get your narrative, her narrative fixed. She's using you to clean up her messes. Um, she's using you. And also, you guys, let me remind you. <laughs> she must feel a certain kind of way about James Charles's mother now because not so long ago on an Instagram live, she said that James Charles's mother told her that James Charles is a narcissist. So someone said you were his mother's friend. Is that why he was reaching out to you? No, no. And I was not like friends per se. Like we would communicate here and there. I haven't actually talked to her in a very long time, but no, like he actually doesn't have like, they're not super like he, she lives in New York and he lives in California and it's not like they have, like they're not together all the time. She, he's an adult. So she doesn't know a lot about the drama that happens in his life. She doesn't know everything that's going on with him. So no, she cannot control what he does or what he says. Um, I don't think it was at all directed um, by his mom at all. Cause I actually spoke to her like a cup that same day or a day few, few later and I said, you know, James um, reached out to me and she was like, well, what did he say? Like she had no idea. And I told her what he said and I told her the angle that he was going and she felt like he was getting manipulated by Tati. And I'm confident that he's a narcissist because his mom told me he was a narcissist. Literally, his mom told me that he was a narcissist. His old mom called him a narcissist. So by now, if nobody has learned, nobody has learned on how KJ will throw you under the bus or turn on you in a heartbeat, then you're just an idiot, in my opinion. The company has informed and believes that Swanson's malicious intent was for the information he was providing Paulson to be made public by a known antagonist of the company as he never once said that any of the information was if off record, but rather only requested not to be noticed as the source. Well, we know that went straight out the window. During the duration of their communication over several months, Paulson would only refer to him as her source, which gave credibility to the assertion she was making about the company and about Tati in her YouTube videos. The company is informed and believes that as the Westbrooks and Swanson's relationship continued to deteriorate, Swanson told Paulson that he was planning to file a lawsuit against the Westbrooks in California. In this regard, the company has informed and believes that Swanson told Paulson that he would let her know in advance of the lawsuit being filed so that she could break the story. And we know, we know KJ loves to break the stories and promote the salacious and unnecessary allegations about the Westbrooks he intended to put therein. The company is informed and believes that moments after he filed the laws, California lawsuits, he utilized software to transmit a disappearing email to Paulson using the alias Bruce Bristol, notifying her that it was done and asking her to promote it. Plaintiff is informed and believes that Paulson did Swanson's bidding and broke the story. It became worldwide news with tens of thousands of articles, videos, and social media mentions. And I assure you, it's coming. Um, there is a huge issue happening right now with them and their business is, are on the verge of imploding. So, and it all relates back to that history that they have and just not necessarily following the rules. So that will be coming in the future, <laughs> but I can't tell you yet, but once it is public, I will promise I will share it. The company is informed and believes that Paulson ultimately discontinued communication with Swanson and Swanson stopped giving her information. Instead of continuing to communicate with Paulson, Swanson began reaching out to other YouTubers, creators via telephone, email, and or other private means with whom he could share the company's confidential information causing further harm to the company. Swanson did reach out to other YouTubers and I'm gonna actually leave a link to a video of somebody doing a, a video on this where this YouTuber was confronted by Swanson and she is absolutely amazing. She shut him down immediately. She put him on blast because clearly she could not be manipulated, unlike some people. And at the end of the day, KJ 
Tarty went through the same thing. Was recently informed that Clark Swanson had been feeding information, disparaging information to drama channels about myself, about my husband, my family, info about Halo Beauty, financials, pipeline of product launches, the kind of stuff that should never be shared under any circumstance. Litigation is expensive. Let me just be raw and open. We sold our house in LA. I moved out of my condo. I have downsized my life in a major way to really be able to go all in and support what's happening with me. All of these threats of like, I've been watching you and I'm gonna expose you and I'm gonna let the world know X, Y, Z. And I'm gonna share with you guys that during this very, very stressful time in my life, James and I almost got divorced. We could not be around each other. He got his own place. We were separated during the holidays. Uh, it was a sad time. I mean, the stuff that was being said about James, about myself, about our character, what we deserve, what we don't deserve, just that intensity behind the scenes felt even more intense. What did she do? She took a step back. This woman is being sued for $30 million by her business partner. The same one that is actually now being sued by Tati because he's being so greedy, allegedly. You, in my opinion, contributed to Tati's misery. How much did she lose out? Did you feel bad for her? Hell no, you didn't. You went all in. You decided to go all the way. You didn't feel a rem bit of remorse for her. You demolished, you tormented her family, in my opinion. You went all in, you went the extra mile to make these people's lives miserable. I'm not saying what's happening to you, you deserve, no. But you should reflect, connect, and just change. You absolutely should. And the thing that kills me is all those people that are there for you. You're taking advantage of their kind heart, which is so wrong, KJ. So wrong. You were just on your Instagram live yesterday flexing about how you're looking to buy a new SUV. Where do you draw the line? You refuse to humble yourself. You on social media, playing Nancy Drew, trying to do what the law enforcement supposed to be doing. You said your case has now gone to uh, Pennsylvania FBI office. Let them do their work. You threatening, you working behind the scenes with your attorneys. You gave up so much during your life with Kay Baxter. You can't keep your mouth shut. You just have to have that attention. It just makes no sense. The most important thing, I'm gonna say this again, KJ, is your family, the beautiful baby boy of yours. Your husband needs a break. Do something constructive. You are taking cue from people online on what is the right things to do. And then you twist it and say that people are, are, are just, I, I, I don't even know the words that you used. Those dog's nails should have been cut long ago. It should have never been brought to your attention in that way, Katie. How many people, or should I say, how many big influences are you on the wrong side of? Why won't they waste their time with you, KJ? In my opinion, you're not worth their time. You are so quick to point out what others have done to you. But you can't humble yourself. You can't take accountability for yourself. You guys, thank you so much. If you made it this far, I truly appreciate you. Please don't forget. Please be kind to one another. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.